In the 1960s, Bob Fosse had the idea to adapt two Italian films into separate one-act musicals comprising one night of theater. One would be Knights of Cabiria, and one would be Big Deal on Madonna Street. As Knights of Cabiria grew into the full-length Sweet Charity, the other half of the show was abandoned. Now, two decades later, Fosse became excited about the project again. The story was a farce about a band of small-time robbers and their hijinks. Big deal. He met with writers about doing the score. Those he met with included Peter Allen and Stephen Sondheim. And he eventually decided he'd prefer to use a score of standards. So not only were there no songwriters, it was also the first time writing a musical's book without a co-author. He wanted to bring film techniques to the Broadway stage, and he wanted to do it his own way. It was his first time back to Broadway after leaving to do all that jazz and star 80. The show's performers included Cleveland Derricks, Lorena Devine, Wayne Salento, and a 21-year-old dancer named Katie Hoffman. The show was beset with problems. Fosse's desire for a film feel had led to an almost bare stage with platforms and scaffolding everywhere. He kept demanding everything from walls to props be painted black, with the result that no one could see anything. Um, one critic, who shall remain nameless, you'll see why in a moment, um, remarked that casting the main robbers as African American was racist, and also that you couldn't see these black actors on the black set with black lighting. <laughs> racist. Uh, the songs also bore little meaning to the plot, and when they did, it was startling and too on the nose. This was before the real era of the jukebox musical, and nobody enjoyed the way the songs were shoehorned in. The Village Voice noted that the show attempted to mix an old movie with old songs, until they both shriveled into a powdery residue. Big Deal closed after two months. Sadly, Bossy died of a sudden heart attack a little over a year later. Big Deal was his last new musical. A hit revival of Sweet Charity opened on Broadway a little while after, but he never quite got over the failure of Big Deal. In fact, when Fosse won the Astaire Award later that year, he used his speech as a platform to lambast the critics he blamed for closing Big Deal. Now, many... That is the most awkward picture I've ever seen. <laughs> I just want to share. Um, so, about Big Deal. Uh, many thought that the dance taken alone was brilliant and among Fosse's best work. In fact, he even won a Tony Award for choreography. People love the number Ain't We Got Fun, sung by a chain gang of men all tied together. And, and women. And women. And women. There we go. Um, and Beat Me Daddy, A to the Bar was highly praised as well. Now, Variety said, it's disheartening that one of the proven masters of the musical theater form was, has waited so long between shows and then delivered a dub. Nobody's perfect, of course. Let's hope Fosse does another show fast. The Times did an interview with Fosse just before Big Deal opened. They wrote, Coronary bypass notwithstanding, Mr. Fosse remains a man with a powerful inclination to flirt with disaster. He is still a smoker who goes through five or six packs of camels a day when he's working, although a recent bout with the flu forced him to lay off for a while, mostly out of deference to his coworkers on Big Deal. Fosse said, it gets so embarrassing coughing all during rehearsals. The actors are all looking at you like, gee, I hope you stay alive to get us to the opening. <laughs> He did, but of course, Big Deal will always be remembered as the great Bob Fosse's last big show. Here to share some memories and a song from Big Deal, Katie Huffman. <laughs> That's Kim Darwin, um, gorgeous little dancer. Uh, by the way, I sang a David Shire song in August for a cult propaganda in Pasadena. We spoke on the phone, but we haven't actually met yet, so hi! <laughs> um, well, I was a teenage drag queen. <laughs> and I tell you this because I was actually performing in La Cajo Fall at the time when um, the auditions for Big Deal came up. And a lot of people told me, yeah, don't bother going, it's going to be an all-black show. And I was like, I really don't care if it's an all-purple show, I'm going to go dance for Bob Fosse. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Uh, and so I went to the open call, and it was exactly like all that jazz these same combinations, and Bob Fosse absolutely walked up to every single person auditioning and said, 
thank you, we won't be needing to see any more, or please stay. And I just kept on making these cuts and eventually um, was cast uh, as a 20-year-old. She's trying to tell me I was 21. I actually turned 21 doing that show. Um, quite a 21-year-old. My 21st birthday was spent in a theater. Go figure. Um, but I did the show, and uh, one of the things that was... <laughs> Then I think, I think you want me to tell the Gwen Verdon story is why you did, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's not gonna be the first story. Uh, the choreography really was very exceptional, and in my opinion, his best. And it's really a shame that it has died with the show. Uh, the close of, the, of Act One was a, a number called Beat Me Daddy A to the Bar. And we all, this is fantastic. You can actually see um, the Tony performance, but of course you know how those Tony performances are shot. It's like crap. But you can sort of get a feel for what it was. But we did this, you know, bum, 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 ba, da, 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 bum, bum. Finished the whole thing, and the audience, <laughs> and our closing night, and they are just screaming and hollering, and we're <sighs> getting ready to move on and do the next scene. And then, except they're not stopping screaming. They are just screaming and screaming, and then we start hearing. One more time! One more time! We're looking at each other, you've got to be kidding me. We looked down at Gordon Harrell, who is conducting, and then we did it one more time. <laughs> thrill, thrill, thrill. Um, and of course, it was such a, a complete heartbreak when it closed, and of course, when Fosse died. Um, but what she wants me to tell you is that Fozzie had this party for us after we closed at his house in Quag. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> it was a party. Um, and that night, we all sat around this big table and he, we each stood up to say whatever we wanted to say. And Gwen Verdon stood up and she said, um, oh, I wish I had a good Gwen Verdon, I don't. She said, you know, I hear everybody saying, fuck Frank Rich. As far as I'm concerned, I hope Frank Rich never gets fucked again. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> now, the opening of the show was the, and really, I could do a whole night on this show. It was incredibly special. It was a flawed show. But as Dana Moore, who was his frug girl in charity at the time, said, if it had been his first show, they would have called him a genius. It was really before its time. But the opening of it was uh, Loretta Devine in this wonderful strapless uh, black velvet gown on, standing on the top of this scaffold scaffolding. And this pin spot would come on her, and she would sing this song. Life is just a bowl of cherries. Don't take it serious. Life's too mysterious. You work. You save, you worry, so but you can't take the dough when you go, go, go. So keep repeating, it's the berries, the strongest oak must fall. Sweet things in life to you were just loaned. So how can you lose what you've never owned? Life is just a bowl of cherries. 